I've been waiting for the perfect time to open this up. And what more of a perfect time than right now? For the tortured poet. This is one of the ugliest sweaters I have ever purchased. Like, my Speak Now sweater is shitting on this one. This ain't that ugly. It's actually pretty cool. It's very unique. Like, I, oh, why did it turn the camera that color? Are we gonna fix ourselves? Anyways, let's put this on. Am I giving tortured poet? <laughs> Am I giving librarian? I just need a pair of glasses. Distinguish, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. I need to get this fixed. Because I look orange. Oompa. Loompa. We'll see how long I can keep this on. I'm getting warm, but also, like, I look more orange. Looking in the viewfinder, I'm, like, orange because of this. But all I need are some glasses. I wish I had a pair of glasses. I don't have any glasses. To complete the full librarian look. Anyways, you guys know why we're here. You know what album we're about to react to. It's been a long anticipated album. Actually, before we even talk, let's do the intro. You ready? Three, two, one. What's up, YouTube? How we doing? Yes. One more time for good luck. Fabric is flying all around. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? How we doing? Yes. Good. The Tortured Poets Department album is out. There's a music video coming for Fortnite with Post Malone. Ah! There's a music video coming for Fortnite, which is, I think, the opener on the album with Post Malone tomorrow. We're just gonna focus on the album tonight. I'm so excited. I feel like there hasn't been a lot of promo until these last few days. Like, a month ago, she was so silent about this album. She was selling the, the different variants of the vinyls. I got two of them. The original and then the Black Dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very excited. I don't know anything about this album. I don't know the theme. I, I feel like I haven't seen a lot of promo for it until recently, but I haven't been paying attention to it because I kind of want to keep the surprise element. I'm so excited, though. I've heard people say that this is giving like a Midnight's Part 2, which I kinda hoped for. Like if I had to choose between like a Folklore and Evermore Part 2 or a Midnight's Part 2, I definitely wanted the Midnight's Part 2 because Midnight's does have those upbeat bangers. And it's summertime, so that's what I need. I need that, let's hope we get that. I don't even have a, a, a Claim 3. Where's the album? Where's the album? I'm nervous. Here it is! Sixteen tracks, runtime of an hour and five minutes. The Torture Poets Department. Oh, it looks so good. Okay, okay, let's go. Here we go with track number one, Fortnite, featuring Post Malone, which is the single. Music video comes out tomorrow night. Let's do this. Why am I nervous? I was supposed to be sent away, but they forgot to come and get me. from partners to neighbors and now she has to kind of torture herself by watching this person in a relationship in a blooming relationship with a whole different person in a whole different house building their life separately from her <laughs> I'm screaming I'm gonna for this for I know I'm pausing a lot already but I'm going to try to pay attention to different themes or different, like, forms of torture throughout the entire album. Because we've already gotten a few ways that she's kind of torturing herself. Instead of moving, she's staying in this house, watching someone that she loved and used to be with grow separate from her. That's one form of torture. She then goes on to say all her mornings are Monday mornings stuck in an endless February. Now, I'm not trying to be rude to the February birthdays out there, but February is quite literally one of the worst months of the year. And I'm so sorry. <laughs> they about to call me anti-black. I'm so sorry. It is Black History Month, you're right. But it's also one of the coldest months, but there's nothing to look forward to in that cold month. You know, December is cold, but you have the holidays. January is cold, and, and there's nothing really great about January either. Like January, February, and March just are kind of meh, in my opinion. August is also meh. <laughs> let's talk about birthday months, and let's talk about which ones are meh, and which ones are top tier. I'm kidding. But we could. Monday mornings are the worst mornings because that's the start of the week. 
February just sucked because, like, just that month in general, is, it's just very bland. Except for Black History Month. We love Black History Month. We do. We do. But she's just stuck in that cycle. Every day is a Monday morning in February. And it doesn't change. It's This was a good opener. And yes, this is Midnight's. <laughs> it's giving Midnight's, which I like. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -mm. First of all, I was not expecting Post Malone to like, not really have a part until the very end. Like I thought he was gonna kind of be uh, uh, like a, a Heim situation. The Heim sisters. I hope I'm saying their name right. I never know. Like how they weren't really in the song, they were just like background vocals. I kind of thought that, that was what she was going to do with him as well, but then he ended up having the outro, which is arguably the coolest part. I love their back and forth. Sounds really cool. This is another Post Malone collaboration that I did not expect, but I'm also like pleased with how it turned out. Here we go with track number two, the title track, The Tortured Poets Department. This is like 80s, 90s. You left your typewriter at my apartment Straight from the tortured poet's department ah. Who else decodes you? And who's gonna hold you like me? I don't like that switch. I don't like that vocal moment. Going from like your middle voice to magically like doing your your head voice at the end of the phrase, like the na na na, oh, it's too jarring. I don't know. And she's doing it in the middle of a phrase instead of like doing it full out in one part of the vocal and then doing a different part of the vocal in the next phrase. But like she's splitting the phrase in half in two separate vocal parts. I don't know. I don't. It's kind of jarring. <laughs> We declare Charlie Puth should be a bigger artist. I scratch your That's head. so random. <laughs> but I've read this one way you come undone. I chose this cyclone with you. Who are these characters? Who's Dylan Thomas and Patti Smith? Are these real people in real life? Because she keeps comparing herself to them, saying like, you're not this guy and I'm not that girl. Two literary legends in one of the places that connects them, Patti Smith, Dylan Thomas, and the Chelsea Hotel. Swift sings in the Torture Poets Department, I laughed in your face and said, you're not Dylan Thomas, I'm not Patti Smith, this ain't the Chelsea Hotel, we're modern idiots. Dylan Thomas is a Welsh poet and writer famous for Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night, Under Milkwood and Fern Hill. Thomas was born in 1914 and died in 1953. Patti Smith is a famous poet, author, songwriter, singer, and painter born in 1947. Her Instagram bio reads, writer, we are all alive together. Smith is still an active writer. She's alive. Okay, period. <laughs> Now, 
lot of these lyrics say no effing body, but she's not saying that. Am I listening to the clean version on accident? I feel like I am. Yes, I am because this explicit version right here says that the song, she's swearing. Hold on. She's not swearing. Sometimes I wonder if you're gonna screw this up with me. But you told Lucy you'd kill yourself if I ever leave. At dinner you take my ring off my middle finger and put it on the wall. People put wedding rings on and that's the closest I've come. So my heart exploded. That's cute. She's like, nobody gets you the way that I get you. I am your person. And I'll always be that person. Okay, this was a good one. Let's go to track three. My boy only breaks his favorite toys. That's a title. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, here we go again. The voices in his hey. head call the rain to end our days of wild. The sickest army call. But you should have seen him when he first got me. My boy only breaks his favorite toys. Damn, not she's the toy. But you should have seen him when he first got me. <laughs> oh my god. Not she's the toy. Why is she the toy? There was a litany of reasons why we could have played for keeps this time. I know I'm just repeating myself. Oh, I get it. I get it. She's getting played with as if she's a toy, but like in that second meaning, she's getting played by this person. He's literally playing her, but playing with her. Playing with her and playing games with her. <laughs> She loves this type of melody. I'm pretty sure there's a song from 1989 that has that same, that same melody. Is it 1989? I'd be an alpha type. I love that distortion in the instrumental. I like that build up at the end. That was a nice like swelling of instrumental. Okay, so far these songs aren't bad, but I'm looking for that like it song. I'm looking for the anti-hero of this album. I need an anti-hero moment. I haven't gotten any of those yet. Like these aren't bad, but they aren't like top tier. I'm looking for the for that top tier standout moment. I hope we get to it. But this was also a really good one. I, I like this one lyrically the most just because she is the toy, and I guess I, it, that it's obvious my boy only breaks his favorite toys, and that she's the toy that he's breaking because he keeps playing with her, playing these games with her. Here we go with track number four, Down Bad. Let's go. Ooh. This is weird. chime da, na, na, na. that's really catchy it's the little moments like that if, if the rest of this song has like that vibe yeah did you really beat me up in a cloud of sparkling dust just to do experiments on Ooh. She's 
still being played with. <laughs> That's a funny lyric. Now I'm down bad crying at the gym. Yes, work on yourself. Work on your body while you're literally going through it. At least keep motivating yourself to keep going. <laughs> Why does that literally me? Not to make it about me, you guys, but that's literally me. I'll be in the worst mood ever, ready to die. I've cried at the gym before. I've been on the ellip. I've been on the, the 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 Smith machine, pumping iron, tears and eyes. Yeah. Especially when 16 Carriages first came out, that song made me holler. That song, every time I listened to it, I could not stop crying. So I feel her pain. Staring at the sky, come back and pick me up. Get up again, I hey! I might just not get that a little bit of like a, a little bit of pizzazz to it, a little bit of seasoning. Fuck it if I can't have us. This is my favorite so far, by the way. If you guys didn't know, I'm going back a little bit. Let me back where I came from. For a moment, I knew cosmic love. Mm. Now I'm down by crying at the gym. Yeah. Fuck it if I can't have us. Just not get up, I might stay down back. Hey, forget the can't have him. Just to leave me here, they get it alone. Mm. In a field in my same old town, that somehow seems so hollow now. They'll say I'm nuts if I talk about the existence of you. Who, what man was it, Maddie? Is this in reference to Maddie? from 1976. I feel like it is. I feel like that, y'all let me know. T t tell me about that lyric down in the comments below if you know about that lyric down in the comments below. Oh, this E. Yeah, the toxicity of it all. Oh, this E. I like that lyric change. At first she was saying fuck it if I can't have us. Now she's saying fuck you if we can't if I can't have us. Like if we can't be together, first it was fuck it. Like I'll just stay down bad. Now it's fuck you personally. Like it, this is a message to you. Everything comes out teenage This is the one. I'm sorry, Fortnite can't be the single because this should be the single. This is what I need a music video for. Oh, that was too good. Oh, Taylor, that was too good. This is potentially going to be my number one. It's already in my top three. I'll be shocked if there are three more songs that kick this out of my top three. But this is safe at number one for now. This is so good. I love the toxicity in the lyrics and how she literally started the song off by saying like she was his experiment. She was still being played with, like like the like the toy song, the one that came before this. I forgot the name of it already. She was referencing that in this song, still being played with, but she's also mentioning how she's so down bad for this person. She wants to stay, despite all the torture, despite all the experimenting, despite the being played with. It's literally, fuck everything else. If I can't have him, I don't want it at all. I don't want anything. And I like that. At least she's standing strong in her toxicity. All right, here we go with track number five, So Long London. So, so long, London, 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 so, so long. Yeah. There's so much happening. Oh, that was excellent. That was fire. I love, oh. Saw in my mind. 
find fairy lights through the mist. I kept calm and carried the weight of the rift. Pulled him in tighter each time he was drifting away. This is eating. Whoa. My spine split from carrying us up the hill. Think I had in me. Oh, the tragedy. So long. London. I didn't opt in to be your odd man out. I found at the club she's heard great things about. I, I did not opt in to be your odd man out. That's a bar. The spirit was gone. We would never come to. And mm. I pissed off you. Let me give you all that you. Sucked her dry. Graves, one gun. I oh, two graves, one gun. Bang, bang. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean. That's so graphic. I did not mean to actually illustrate. <laughs> I don't even know if YouTube allows like stuff like that. Like I know it's just a hand hand tool, hand mouse tool, but the fact that I I don't even know. I might have to blur that out. We'll see. That's a nice line also. Well, I was gonna say something else. Oh, London. When she says so long London, what is she talking about when she says London? Is she talking about a boy that was from London? Is she talking about an experience that she had in London? Or, you know, just like something sentimental in London. Like, what is it? Is there a boy that's from London? Let's see. Oh, Aaron Dessner produced this track. Who produced track number four? Because I'm definitely team Aaron over Jack. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I just feel like the Aaron songs, especially on Midnight's, ate up Jack's songs. Dessner over Antonoff. <laughs> okay, let me back up a little bit. Because Jack helped her with Down Bad. <laughs> I never say anything bad about you, Jack. I'm just joking. It's all love, Jack. It's true. I'm just real like that. It's all love. Okay, let's get back into the song. Oh, wait. I was trying to look up what London... What's in London? So Long London is rumored to be about Taylor's British ex-boyfriend, Joe Alwyn. Oh, he's British? I didn't know he was British. Oh, and she dated him for a long time. From 2016 to 2023? Oh, period. It also says this is the second time Swift has used London in a track title. The first being London Boy off of 2019's Lover. That makes sense. I didn't know Joe, Al Joe Alwyn was a beans and toast. Find someone. <clears throat> and you say I abandoned the ship, but I was going down with it. Every breath feels like where is there. Oh. You're not sure if he wants to be there. that line about the shit because in his eyes she abandoned the shit like she left but in her eyes she stayed and was holding it down and was going down with the shit so I love that she like provided both perspectives I love when she gets in her like haunted bag, like very ghostly. I swore that you loved me, but where were the clues? Just getting color back into my face. I'm just coming back to life. Hell, cause I loved this place. Okay, I will say, I did like the start of this song a lot more than the end of it. Like, the steam kind of died, maybe because it was a little on the longer side. But she started this with a bang. Just like the, the, the different waves of harmonies coming in. And then you weren't expecting the beat change. It got real boom, 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 boom. Almost like a heartbeat. I want to hear it one more time before we move on. So, so she should have brought this motif back to the end. If she had ended the song with this same thing, I would have been on like a hundred. Yeah, that eats. That's very nice. I like that. I love the production on this song. I also like the song itself. I just think it, it went on a little too long and I lost steam listening to it. But it was fun lyrically to listen to. Here we go with an even longer track. <laughs> 
Track six, but daddy, I love him. I love him so much. Dad, uh, you can't rip him away from me like that. I'm still gonna see him, dad. I don't know. It's getting late, I'm getting tired. That's normally when I become an idiot, so bear with me. Also, I'm getting hot, I'm about to take this off. All right, but daddy, I love him, let's go. Now she's playing with her parents. Now she's scaring them on purpose. <laughs> well, he got me pregnant, so we're staying together. Not pregnant, but we're still staying together. <laughs> this is so teenage girl coded. I'm so weak. This song is already so funny just because of how she's like making it lyrically. <laughs> He was revelry, bedroom eyes like a remedy. Soon enough, the elders had convened down at the city hall. Lord knows the word. This part's pretty. We never heard just screeching tires of true love. My baby, you know that you should see your face. I just can't help but think the day that she is actually pregnant, I think the world will descend into chaos. Like, she will break the internet. It's gonna be a day. The day, well, yeah. Mm hmm. If she wants kids, of course. She just be saying stuff sometimes. There's a lot of people in town that I bestow upon my fakest smiles. Mm. Stand went to my parents and they came around. All the wine moms are still holding out. But fuck them. It's over. <laughs> Back on harmony. Again. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Now this song was the exact opposite of So Long London. I didn't feel like this one was too long at all. This one I liked the length of. I didn't get tired of it. I also love how towards the end her lyrics change. Instead of I'm running with my dress unbuttoned, screaming, but daddy, I love him. Now in the final one she says, now I'm dancing in my dress in the sun and even my daddy just loves him. I'm his lady. At the end, throughout the entire song, she's saying like to all the naysayers, this is my man, I'm gonna stick by him, my man, my man, my man. And no matter like what all you naysayers say, it's not getting to me. And you know what? You're not invited to the wedding. And you know what? I'm having his baby. I mean, I'm not, but I want to. And you should see the look on your face right now. You guys are all so mad that he's choosing me and I'm choosing him. We're choosing each other and I'm gonna stand by him. And now she's having like her happy ending towards the end of the song and it's still F all of y'all. <laughs> Here we go with track number seven, Fresh Out the Slammer. Oh, I'm noticing that this song and the last one had like country, folk, rock vibes. 
So maybe she's getting back into that that era again because the beginning of this also has that like country feel, that rock feel. But I liked how the last one had the, the folkiness, the strumming and the guitar also. It, that was like a bunch of different genres if we're being real. It's crazy when you think about it because she's not even talking about jail. She's talking about being in a relationship. And that's even crazier. Because you should never feel like being with someone is com comparable to being in prison. <laughs> Ever. And that's how she felt. Damn. Okay. Here we go with track eight. Florida. You can be the heat if you beat the charges too. They said I was a cheat. I guess it must be true. And my friends are. Oh, I didn't mention, but this song features Florence and the Machine. Smell like weed or a little baby. And the city reeks so driving myself crazy. Now, what does that mean? And my friends all smell like weed or little babies. What's the little baby? Who of her friends had little babies that she was around? <laughs> and what do little babies smell like? <laughs> Sometimes I feel like everybody is a sexy baby. Florida. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Florida. Oh, Now, why they made me want to go to Florida? Florida's crazy. And this song is also crazy. I don't remember which podcast I was watching, but somebody said that if you look up Florida Man and then your birthday, you're going to find some crazy-ass arrest or crazy-ass story about someone doing something crazy on your birthday. 
So I suggest if you've made it this far into the video, you look up Florida man and then your birthday and then come back and comment what that man did on your birthday in Florida. Florida is the craziest place in the United States. Me thinks. Out of all the songs we've heard so far, this is the most dynamic. I love the, the production on this one, the floor it up. Like it was just very like loud and in your face, which I wasn't expecting to get on this album, but I appreciate it. It kind of shook me up. It woke me up a little bit. Everything else has been like, there've been like nice beats, but it's been on the, on the softer side, which I appreciate it. And they both ate. I love when they were taking turns and, and singing together and harmonizing. That was it. That was really it. Let me save this one. All right, here we go with track number nine, Guilty as Sin, question mark. Hey, yeah. Drowning in the blue Nile, he sent me downtown lights. I hadn't heard it in a while. My, I dream of cracking rocks, throwing my life to the wolves or the ocean rocks. bit of like country folk too i like it i'm starting this one over this one just sounds very pretty i want to drive with the windows down to this song this is the vibe that i'm getting this is like the fourth time she's mentioned the color blue also i've been keeping in my head the number of times she says blue At first I was thinking maybe she's so in love with this person, but she doesn't really like know this person yet. They haven't been in love with each other that much. Like they're just in their like, their, their beginning stages of like being lovey-dovey together. And she's imagining things that they've never even did yet because they're that in love. But like after she says the, without ever touching his skin, how can I be guilty as sin? It was almost like, I don't know. Cause at, at first I thought it was like, nice and beautiful but then those last two lines made me think that like something bad happened like the things that she's saying the messy top lip kiss what if he's written mine on my upper thigh only in my mind like did those things actually happen or like are people's op opinions and things about things that we did that we never did are so loud that i'm starting to think that they happened i feel like that's what she's doing Sonically, I'm loving this, but also I after hearing the chorus a second time I don't think it's a negative thing. I think those last two sentences without ever touching his skin How can I be guilty of sin? I think she's just saying like The things that I thought we did that we've never done How can I feel so like guilty about them even though they've never happened? I don't think I could be wrong It could be about like the outside perspective on this relationship, but I think it might just be I love this person so much Have we done these things? But we haven't. So why do I feel so guilty about thinking about these things that we did? Is what I'm going to take away from it. That's what I'm going to go with. And what if I roll the stone away? 
Oh, maybe it is about the outside perspective. Because <laughs> who's crucifying her? The people. Is what they want for me. They don't know how you haunted me so stunningly. Oh. I choose you and me. Religion. I'll talk about it at the end. I keep pausing too much. What if he's written my Oh! I was, I thought we were gonna have like a slow acapella, like a like a short acapella moment and then the beat, but she held it out longer than I expected. And I don't know why, but that got me so hyped. <laughs> now I'm pausing it again. We're never gonna get through this album. I'm just gonna say what I was gonna say, what I thought, what I was going to initially weigh into the end, but I'm just gonna say it now. I think this song purposely is confusing on like what she's talking about because she's using different words that are kind of like opposite, but but she's putting them together in the same sentence. And the only reason I'm saying that is because she says, they don't know how you haunted me so stunningly. That's not a phrase that actually makes sense. Like being haunted is not something that you'd want to happen, but the fact that it is happening, it, it's stunning. Like it's almost like a positive haunting, like a positive thing is happening to her. So I feel like this song is supposed to be like, it's a good thing, but it's also like, a shameful look down upon things so like why do I feel guilty but why does it feel so good at the same time I feel like it's both of those it's both come on what if he's written mine on my every on the inside that's excellent I don't think y'all get it oh let me put a mark next to this one <laughs> I have to go back. The drum build up. What if he's written mine on my every cry on the Guilty as sin, the song that you are guilty as sin. Well, yes, yeah. That's excellent. That's good. That's great. That's a good one. Mhm. Mm wow, I'm hot. Okay, now I got hairs from the sweater all on my Coachella shirt. Huh. Hopefully y'all can't see that, but it's hot. I gotta take this off. Maybe I can give a little. just so I can stay in character as the librarian. This might come off too, because I'm still hot. <laughs> Anyways, Guilty as Sin, so good. So, 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 so good. Like, melodically, it was great. I love the confusingness in the lyrics. I ended up looking up the lyrics, and it's speculated that this is about Maddie Healy, and it's saying it's because of the, the negativity around his entire thing. Is this the same song where I asked if this is about the guy from 1976? Or was that a different song? Is this the second song about him? I don't remember when I asked that question, but I don't, it doesn't matter. Anyways, this was an excellent song. Let's move on to the next one. Track 10, Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? Question mark. The who's who of who's that is poised for the attack. Scratch as I scream. Hey. Who's afraid of little old me? You should be. That was cool word painting. Not you should be. Bullet and just grace. At all costs, keep your good name. You don't get to tell me you feel bad. Then we could all. Just laugh until I cry. 
So I leap from the gallows and I levitate down your street. Crash the party like a record scratch as I scream. Who's afraid of little old me? Oh, she didn't scream it this time. Look out all her teeth. So tell me everything is not about me. But what if it is? <laughs> Ooh. Then say they didn't do Ooh. it to hurt me. But what if they did? I wanna see asylum where they raised me. She's crazy. So all you kids can sneak into my house with all the cobwebs. That I'm fearsome. And I'm wretched And I'm wrong mm. Putting narcotics Into all Of my songs She's like repeating What people have said about her That she's fearsome And she's wretched and wrong But the fact that she said Put narcotics into all my songs That's so old lady coded <laughs> You know how people Can't just compliment something these days They gotta be so extra Like Oh my God, she slang crack when she was in the studio. She did the longest line of crack when she wrote this. <laughs> and there's so many other ways. Like I've, uh, I've even said some stupid ones too. I literally just said, <laughs> when Beyonce's album came out, I'll just put the clip in here on what I said. But we can't just compliment people. There's a piece of this sweater on my lip. Yeah, we can't just compliment people regularly these days. This is, it's gotta be a hyperbole. It's gotta be crazy. She put crack in this song, is what she's referring to. But it's the way that she said it. Put narcotics into all of my songs. Like, that's... <laughs> she's funny. I was tame, I was gentle to the circus life made me mean. Don't you worry, folks, we took out all her teeth. She doesn't bite. Track 11, I can fix him. No, really, I can't. This is a short one. The small cloud billows out his mouth like a freight train through a small town. They shake their heads saying, God help her when I tell him he's my man. But this is giving, but daddy, I love him. The title alone, they're very similar. I can fix it, no I really can, but data! Good Lord doesn't need to lift a finger I can fix it, no really I can And only I can His hand so callous from his pistol Softly traces hearts on my face mm, That imagery And I could see it from a mile away The delusion. Maybe I can't. Okay, there we go. So she wasn't deluded the entire way through. She kind of came to her senses because there's no fixing anybody. They have to fix themselves before you can help in any way. If they don't want the help, there's literally nothing you can do. Here we go with track 12, Love of My Life, L-O-M-L. Let's get it. Okay, this gotta come off.
know. I love it. About a million times. It's the only instrument too. So good. You took me to hell too. And all at once, the ink bleeds. A con man sells a fool a get love quick scheme. If you know it in one glimpse, it's legendary. What we thought was for all time was momentary. Still alive, killing time at the cemetery. Never quite buried. You should talk to me under the table, talking I might be stretching this, but the coward claim he was a lion is obviously a reference to the cowardly lion. But it also kind of sounds like if you're not paying attention to the paying attention to the lyrics, the coward claimed he wasn't lying. The coward claimed he wasn't lying. That's like stretching it, but I, I feel like that was somewhat intentional. But this song is very sad and somber. She's just like kind of reminiscing one of the relationships. I'm gonna imagine it was the one with the, the, the British guy. This one's sad, but also so beautiful at the same time. Your arsons match your somber eyes mm. And I'll still see you until I die the loss of my life Oh yeah. Genius. I need to change my battery again because it's about to die, but I want to get these thoughts out before I change my battery because I know I'm not going to remember what I need to say. Her doing the lyric change, but only for the very last chorus is so genius because it lingers. It sticks more than how she just said, love of my life, which is what she used previously. And for this last one, she changed it to loss of my life, which goes to show that like, even though things ended badly with this relationship, like she's still reminisces and thinks about the positive things and it's like a bittersweet thing but it had to happen like it was a sad and bad thing that happened but she's also happy to be able to move on from it but sad that she had to move on from it so like this is the loss of her life that's her longest like public relationship right i don't know much about her dating history i try not to to know too much about it because i don't care that much like i'm here for the music but it is nice to know like some backstory this is the longest relationship she's had the joe alwyn one so, like, that couldn't have been easy goodbye. Mm. Loss of my life eats as the final lyric. All right, baby, we are back and better than ever, baby. Um, I hope I got all my thoughts out with Lamo, Love of My Life, Loss of My Life, because here we go with track 13, I Can Do It With A Broken Heart. There's people screaming A in the back. She's having the time of her life. Mm -hmm. I like that. The glittering crime, the lights refract, sequin stars are for silhouette. And they said, baby, you gotta fake it till you make it. And I did, lights, camera, bitch, smile. Hey! Lights, camera, bitch, smile. Did I hear that right? <laughs> well, period, and period, ugh. Cause I can do it with a broken heart. Hey, 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 so hey. I love a vivacious beat. I love a vivacious beat. And this got me moving, vivacious. Punchy. Yeah. I love it. 
love that lyric so much because it's like, uh, it reminds me of Katy Perry. I don't know why I immediately thought of Katy Perry, but like when she was going through a divorce or something and she literally had to go on stage and perform. Like it just, it's like you're going through it and then camera action. <sighs> Like, camera bitch smile, like, you gotta get your shit together. You gotta, you got a bunch of people out there waiting for you. Which kind of sucks, but it's also sick how artists can do that. Like, compartmentalize. Is that, is that the right word? Just, like, separate things that they're going through to be able to, to do their job still. They shouldn't have to do that, but it's cool that they do it. He loved me for all time, but that time was quite short. Breaking down, I hit the floor. All the pieces of me shattered as the crowd was chanting more. Yeah, that's sad. You're literally doing your job and, and like people don't care what you're going through behind the cameras, what you're going through, you know, in the shadows. They don't care. They want you to do this and do that, but do better at that and do better at this also, but make sure you're doing this and don't forget to do that. And why haven't you done this yet? Stop crying. You need to do this. Like you're late. You should have been did that. It's just nonstop. Fans ask for things non-stop people are asking for you to do things non-stop and I, i'm not trying to relate but i can relate on a very very much smaller level and i don't complain about this i don't complain because i know that when y'all are asking for these things y'all are just excited for me to give y'all content so i don't complain i i really don't it's not me complaining but there are times where like i don't think about that and i'm like i just gave y'all seven videos in two days and you're already asking me for something else that literally happens i have that and then the thought process of like well they just like my content they're just excited for the next video so i can't i'm not gonna lash out i'm not gonna get upset but there have been so many times where i'll post a video thinking like oh okay i can finally rest <laughs> and the first comment isn't oh this was a good video it's where's the that -na 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 reaction i'm like oh brother God! But I never snap back. I never get upset because all you're doing is letting me know that you like the content and you want more from me. Hopefully, that's what I'm gonna take from it. But there are moments where like, I don't think about that and I get kind of upset. So I, I know it's crazy when you think about Taylor, like the degree of Taylor Swift having to deal with that. Mm. Mm -mm. Hey. Try and come from my job. Try to do what I do. Try to be in my shoes. That was the perfect way to end this. Also, I love that this song is like, the lyrics are literally depressing and, and she's literally talking about like being overworked and just being used and manipulated and having to keep doing her job when she doesn't want to and not getting a break. And like, it's just this happy dancey beat. I act like it's my birthday. <laughs> I enjoyed the contrast between the lyrics and the instrumental being all positive, sparkly, upbeat, sunshine, rainbows. Here we go, track 14, The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived. Was any of it true? Gazing at me starry-eyed Who the fuck was that guy? Mm. He tried to buy some pills From a friend of friends of mine That's weird. If you break up with someone, I feel like you need to break off the connections with everyone that that person is associated with. Well, I, I can't actually say that. I've never been in a relationship, like a serious relationship, so I don't know. But I feel like it's kind of weird and backhanded to be like, we've broken up, but I'm still gonna hang out with your friends. Like, mm, I guess if you made like a stable connection with them, you keep in touch, but I don't know. How do y'all feel about that? I don't know. I, I guess I can't really speak on it until I'm in that situation. Hopefully I won't be in that situation, but let me know your thoughts on that. And I don't even want you back. I just want to know. Mm, clarity. If rusting my sparkling summer was the goal to the smallest man who ever lived, 
Yikes. You hung me on your wall. Tiny little man. Once your queen had gone, you treat her like an all so real. You did. I would hate to be this man. Like, what were you, a spy? You snake? I don't know you. And this entire time, I did not know you. Like, I guess the best way to describe you is the smallest man who ever lived, like, because there's nothing else to say about you. That's, yeah, she ate. I'm surprised this wasn't, like, a track five. This is giving track five also. I guess So Long London was, like, softer and more emotional. This was, like, more, like, rage feel. Like, she's angry. Track 15, The Alchemy. This happens once every few lifetimes The hospital was a drag Worst sleep that I ever had mm. I circled you on a map I haven't come around in so long Did the clowns get the crown, baby I'm the one to be Did the clowns get the crown? What is alchemy? I've watched Full Metal Alchemist, the anime, but is that actually like accurate to what alchemy is? Like the changing of chemicals? Let's see. The medieval forerunner of chemistry based on the supposed transformation of matter. It was concerned particularly with the attempts to convert base metals into gold or to find a universal elixir. Okay, I get it, but I don't get it. <laughs> a seemingly magical process of transformation, creation, or combination. Okay, yes, it's similar to Full Metal Alchemist. But I'm making a I love this. Well, this one flew right over my head. This track may have flown right over my head. Mmm, I like that. I like the idea of like, we went our separate ways, but like we can't fight the alchemy. If things change and we still find our way back together, who are we to fight it? Like, let me ditch these losers. Let me ditch these clowns and get back with you. Cause like, clearly I'm on the winning team. I got the crown. Yes, I'm blessed. Yes. The lyrics don't go like that, but y'all get what I was referencing. Yeah, this one was a good one. And I and I like the, the swing of it. But the idea of like, just like, falling back in love with this person that you needed to separate from, that's also really cute. And it's clearly something that happens once every lifetime. These chemicals hit her like white wine. Like she's in her happy place. Who is she to fight it? Here we go with the final track 
on the Torture Poets Department, track 16, Clara Bow. a lot of people throughout this album. Who's Clara Bow? Clara Gordon Bow was an American actress who rose to stardom during the silent film era of the 1920s and successfully made the transition to talkies in 1929. Okay, Clara Bow. Silent actress to talking actress. Did you know you'd be picked like a rose? I'm not trying to exaggerate, but I think I might die if it happened this time. She changed the lyrics from Clara Bow to Taylor Swift. Everything that Clara Bow kind of went through, now she's kind of referencing her own life, saying that she's also going through these things kind of, which I can imagine. She's one of the biggest artists of all time, especially in this moment right now. She's at her peak. This much of imagining, this much of imagining is what I can imagine of what she goes through with her fame. From the outside looking in, it, it's, all the, it's all the glitz and glamor and glory, but I know she goes through it. You can't even go to one of your best friend's weddings without all your fans swarming. The police having to show up. There are only like a few stars who I feel like go through that. And she's definitely one of them. Not a few stars, there are a lot of people, but like in terms of music, I feel like there are only some that are so high that, that go through that where it's a, an issue, like a safety issue at that. I like the theme of this song and how she's like putting a spotlight on Clara Bow, highlighting, you know, like the good that she's done, but also acknowledging her struggles and then also acknowledging her own struggles. Putting up a mirror to herself to like realize like, girl, I'm kind of going through this too. I feel you, girl. But like, if I can be honest, in terms of like the song itself, it's okay. The message, excellent. Sonically, it's all right. But we've just concluded the standard edition of the Torture Poets Department. There are like bonus songs. I don't know if they're on streaming. I got the one with the Black Dog. I don't know if that's a different song on that one, but there is a song called The Manuscript on the vinyl, which I also have, but I don't know if she's gonna put it on streaming because it took her a long time to put You're Losing Me on streaming and I still haven't heard that song even though I can listen to it right now. We just got done listening to the Tortured Poets Department. I like the cohesivity in this album. Specifically the cohesivity is, is one thing that I wanna like highlight. This album sounds a lot more, you know, like refined than Midnight's. And I'm only going to compare it to Midnight's because they have similar sound. I'm not going to compare it to Hurry Recordings or other albums that came before it. Just strictly Midnight's because they're very similar. This one has a leg up because it was her redo. She was able to kind of do Midnight's and perfect it. I like this, I don't want to say I like it more because the songs on Midnight's aren't as cohesive, but they stand out because of how different they are. Like Maroon, an anti-hero, and you're on your own kid, and mastermind, um, bejeweled, like they all sound so different sonically. Whereas these all are very cohesive and kind of have that same vibe. I feel like one of the stick out ones was maybe 
Florida, but even Florida flows with the rest of this album. And I guess it's something that I can only tell with time, but on my initial listen, I don't think there are that many standout tracks. And I don't even mean that in like a good way or a bad way. I just mean songs that, you know, like when you heard Antihero for the first time, you knew that that was gonna be the song off the album. It was the song that blew up. It was the song that got a music video first. It was the song that was pushed first. She knew, we knew. I'm almost positive, like I had a, I was moving to that song. Her singing, her singing is so good. And I know it's been good the past few albums. Like it's never been bad in my personal opinion, but I just feel like her voice gets smoother and smoother with each album. The way that she does her harmonies, like the harmonies will come in, she sounds like haunted sometimes. She can get really light and very bright or she can sound very low and like deep, like her, she does a lot of low moments. Which I feel like she didn't do a lot in the past. I feel like these instrumentals were cooler I, I don't know how else to describe them. I'm just gonna use the word cooler. Yeah, this was a good album. I, do I wanna say if it's better or worse than Midnight's? I kinda wanna say it's better. I do wanna, I do think that this album is slightly better than Midnight's. Like, I don't remember what number I gave Midnight's, but if Midnight's is like a seven, this album is like an eight, 8.2 feeling the 8.3. This is, this is better. It's not her best. Sorry, you guys. Folklore, I think, still has the number one spot in terms of, like, quality. But that's a conversation for another day. Let's just focus on this album and the songs that I saved. So, out of the 16 tracks I saved, My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys, Down Bad, So Long London, But Daddy I Love Him, Florida, Guilty As Sin, I Can Do It With A Broken Heart, The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived, and The Alchemy. So I saved one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I saved nine out of 16 tracks. I did not save Fortnite, The Torture Poets Department, Fresh Out The Slammer, Who's Afraid of Little Old Me, I Can Fix Him No Really I Can, Love Of My Life, and Clara Bow. None of the songs that I didn't pick are bad, but they just aren't ones that stood out to me enough for me to save them. But I feel like they will grow on me at some point. Her music has a, a habit of growing on me. Cause there are some songs from Midnight's that I know I slept on that I absolutely love now. I'm looking at you, you're on your own kid. You always have been. Now I've had to pick a top three out of the songs that I did save. I feel like this is somewhat easy for me. Down Bad is in there. For sure. Now me stumped already. I wanna say Down Bad, Florida, and then Guilty as Sin. My initial top three. What's, I need a refresher. What's Guilty as Sin? <laughs> yes, Guilty as Sin is in my freaking top three. Yes, absolutely. That was pretty easy. Down Bad, Guilty as Sin, and Florida in no particular order. Yes, this was the Torture Poets Department by Taylor Swift. Good album. I'm pleased. I'm happy. I'm happy with this. Um, let me know all your thoughts about anything Taylor Swift related, whether it's the album or a specific song. Let me know your top three or the songs that you saved, the songs that you liked on your initial listen, the songs that you did not like. Let me know your claimed tracks and what your actual tracks are because I didn't give claimed. I should have. Thank y'all so much for watching and hopefully enjoying. I love y'all so, 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 so much. Follow me on my social medias here and link down in the description below. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, and of course, click that notification bell so you're always notified when I post more Taylor content. She has the music video for Fortnite coming tomorrow night, so I need to do that. I got a bunch of It Girls still coming. Dua Lipa's album is coming. Billie Eilish, her album is coming. So yeah, if you're notificated, YouTube will send you those notifications when those videos are up. Anyways, thank you so, 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 so much for watching. I love y'all and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.